Welcome to my blog. So we're going to continue with this blog a little bit and talk about generalization of program design in terms of blocking your day and blocking your training to get the most success that you can have over the long period of time. And I know that a lot of people that are watching this aren't training specifically for anything, which isn't a bad thing. I'm not training specifically for anything any myself at this point in my life. And what I typically notice is a lot of people get hung up because they can't really think through the step process of putting a workout together in terms of, okay, if I don't have this finite needle point that I'm training towards, how do I put my training together to meet one, two, three, four goals that I have for myself right now? You know, for example, with, with me and the age that I'm at now, I still want to maintain a certain degree of maximal strength. I still want to maintain a certain degree of dynamic ability. Um, you know, the ability to, to sprint, jump, kick, punch. And on top of that, you know, uh, the reality is, is uh, a big part of me also wants to get leaner and fitter. Okay, you know, very general terms. So I know that based on the goals that I have with past belief systems or some of the coaching principles that we see out there that I'm sort of stuck. Some of them are inversely related to the other. But it's a bit of a misconception. A lot of people believe due to uh, maybe some information that's coming through the internet that isn't clear enough that we cannot train for maximal strength and perhaps fitness at the same time in terms of anaerobic capacity. And it's actually not true. You can, but you have to be very specific in how you set up your programs in terms of what takes priority and when. And so what I like to do is use a system based on uh, what Louis Simmons used to refer to as blocks of training in a given day. And we incorporated it with Joe Logan at Ashland University, meaning which every given day we had one, two, or three blocks of specific goals that we tried to master for that day. Some of the goals were fitness-based. Some of the goals were technical-based. Some of the goals were uh, an amalgamation of everything, okay, movement-based, for lack of a better word. So what that means is once you establish what you're actually training for and you establish the goals that you want to achieve, all you have to understand is that the things that have the greatest neurological demand or the greatest potential for injury or for a lack of a better descriptor, the thing that en encompasses the most need for speed of completion, needs to go in block one. Now, how you set up your blocks is completely up to you. A lot of people believe that you can put your blocks sporadically throughout the day, meaning you have an AM session, which is block one, a PM session, which is block two and three, or an AM session that's block one and two, a PM session that's block three. It all works pretty well. The only area that you'll run into trouble is if you try to combine all your goals in one training session. Not that you can't do it, trust me. There's lots of world-class athletes that will do a sprint workout or maybe an anaerobic capacity workout right into the weight room, right into mobility, flexibility, and go home for the day. You usually see that in college systems, unfortunately, because they have such limited schedules, and they still get better, okay? Now, why does the anaerobic capacity work in their situation take precedent? Because it's sport. So just briefly, always remember that if you are training for something specifically that is a needle point goal, like running the 800 meters better at the track meet in six months, then obviously if anaerobic capacity work is on the menu for the day from your coach, that workout takes precedent to everything. You're you're out of control of that situation. Sport always takes precedent. So it's not ideal situation, okay? We know that, but that's reality. But back to general terms. If you're not training specifically for something, there's a much broader, much grayer area of existence for you as a training athlete, okay? That's why the sport of fitness 
okay, CrossFit gets away with what they get away with, okay, is because they're not trying to master one thing to the ideal peak of existence. They're not trying to become the best power lifter. They're not trying to become the best Olympic lifter. They're not trying to be the best sprinter. They're trying to be pretty good at everything so that they can encompass their skills and do well at the sport of fitness. But I will say this, the CrossFit athletes that are having the most success at the most elite level, they're blocking their training as well. They're not just simply going into the weight room and doing a wad every day where they do, you know, circuits on the concept two, jump into some power cleans, jump up on the chin up bar, do some bicep curls and some funky shit and then head out the door and get progressively better. That will only work with a very adolescent or immature trainer, okay, or trainee. When you want to get better, you have to block your training in terms of the goals that you have and the thing that you want to succeed at. But in a very general sense, think of it like this. If you're going to choose the goals of, let's say, you want to increase your power clean, increase your vertical jump, and increase hip mobility flexibility, okay? A very simple way to do this would be to come in in the morning session, okay? Maybe it's 30 minutes, maybe it's 40 minutes, and you're gonna power clean and squat, and maybe a third auxiliary, okay? And that would be block one for the day. You come back in the evening, okay? And in the evening sessions, block two, you're going to do all your auxiliary movements on that day for posterior chain, okay? You're going to do RDLs, 45 degree hyper, maybe reverse hyper, glued ham raise, etc. You're going to do that training in block two, okay? And immediately following block two, because maybe that workout took you 40 minutes, block three is a 20 minute session of hip mobility, flexibility, stretching, etc. You go home for the day and you have achieved three blocks of training for that day. If anaerobic capacity work needs to be emphasized in there, you would come in in the morning, do your CNS work, do your strength work in the morning. In the afternoon session, you're going to come back, do prowler pushes, sprints, ladders, sprint ladders, not the ladder on the ground, that thing's fucking nuts. Okay, sprint ladders, uh, things like that, and then finish with mobility, flexibility. And so now you've also maintained your three blocks, your three emphasis, and it has allowed you to train that way. And in the whole scheme of things, okay, your total training, even though it was two times during a day, but your goals, you know, your goals are your goals. You have to make time for yourself sometimes. But in that double day training, it should still only have taken about 80 to 90 minutes of your total day. So you got to get in, get out, get it done. I hope that this gives you something to think about. Talk to you later. Woo!